Ooh, yucca. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. The wind is telling me I can't do what I want to do today. Not even close. Slight panics this morning. I'm moving the boat to another berth this morning, so I'm in the river. It's kind of cool to see. It's the first time I've been in the river since that day when it all went bad. Okay, I'm in. Pretty close to the neighbour. Thank you, Perkinson. Perkinson's working again, as you've heard. Yeah, um, I was in an oversized berth and uh, they've, they've finally found a place for me to, to sit. I'm going to look at the depths gauge because there's not a lot of depths in here. <laughs> I don't, that's probably not right. Well, I hope it's not right. <laughs> the thing here is they've got shallow berths and uh, everybody's surprised at my boat uh, being 2.4 meters. I don't know what that is in feet, but it's, it's, it's a deep keel. It's a deep boat deeper than what would normally be considered normal in this day and age. Back in the day, it wouldn't have been unusual. But they build the berths for short boats in shallow waters. Um, so uh, unfortunately, um, anyway, I'm stuck here with the poor people. <laughs> this, is, this is definitely a poorer neighborhood. No. I always test the gears before you untie the ropes, got the engine started, warm her up, then try the gears, make sure the gearbox works okay. Um, I've actually been on a boat when it didn't once. And you let the ropes go and the gearbox doesn't engage, so that's why I do that. Uh, and um, she wouldn't move. She was stuck. I don't know if we had an extra rope, I don't know. It was like weird. She wouldn't move. So I don't know if the keel was in the mud. This is what I'm expecting her to do here, is put the keel in the mud. Always end up rivers, I don't know why. Too hot in the boat, I'm taking my office up there. Got everything in here. Kettle, grill, I got toasters, microwave, TV. And a fridge. Unlike the one in New Zealand, this isn't full of beer, unfortunately. One hundred percent yes, yeah, baby. <laughs> yes. Well, there you go. Well, I've set my office up here today. It's too hot on the boat. Wow. It's quiet here. It's too quiet, really. There's just actually no one around. Now, I think that will do for the day. The marina is split into two halves. One half is the marina itself. Then there's this, the boatyard. I wanted to come in here and have some work done on Shaddy. And I met up with some friends who I didn't actually know yet, if you see what I mean. Fellow YouTubers. This is the boat Brewpeg from the channel Project Brewpeg. Owners Jess and Damien bought the boat shortly after it had sunk in 2013 and were converting it into an expedition vessel. Hey! And I went aboard to say hi, and I got fed as well. That's what's left of the most gorgeous breakfast I ever had. He <laughs> sounds like me when I'm drunk. Me bugging you, bugging me. <laughs> There's just too many YouTubers in the same room. <laughs> this saloon's only big enough for the two of us. Yes. <laughs> this vlog is not big enough for all of us. Actually. And we've got the dog as well. This dog is. 
It was a dog's ass. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, you're back. Oh, you're back. Hello. And how are you today? <laughs> I could put a voiceover on that and you could be a star and I could make millions out of somebody oh. else's dog. <laughs> yeah? What do you think? Honest. He's got the gummy thing going on. <laughs> he does. His head Did you have a gummy thing? thing? <laughs> no, really? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Don't look at me in that tone of voice. As we share slightly different timelines, I have to say congratulations to them and their team because the boat is now actually in the water. So well done them. And there'll be more of them coming up later in the series. Meanwhile, back down on the waterfront in the marina, there was a guy skulking, hanging around, looking a bit suspicious, I thought. And then I saw somebody on the water. What was going on? Well, this was going on. I love to see unusual and special boats. This is a steel-built schooner rig, and she was on her way down to South America. But today she was up the river on a little stop just to get some fuel. It's super shallow here. And they must be almost hitting the ground, and it's uh, low tide. They managed to get the fore rope on now, or they're just about to. And that's my view from the house this morning. Well, I say house, my boat, but to me it's a house. And that's the view I have. Um, it's one of the sort of perks of living on a boat, if you like. But occasionally, just getting off a boat occasionally is a must. And using a shopping trip uh, as an excuse is always a good one. Also, a good way to see the city. I love some of this architecture. There wasn't too much of it in Bundaberg, but what there was was quality stuff. This is typical Australian. Uh, you see it in the movies, but here it was for real. You have to look above the modern shop fronts to see some of the old buildings. Most of this was built in the 1800s, so it's been around a while and uh, you don't see quality like this these days. Some of the ironwork on the balconies reminded me of French styles that I'd seen in Central America. Then there were these bridges, really old also, uh, made mostly from riveted steel. I believe they've just become registered monuments. There's quite a few of them, all crossing the river, going into Bundaberg itself. As many will know, I'm not a fisherman, but I do like a bit of fish. My friend Annie took me to this place and introduced me to these. Um, I wasn't sure. They're called bugs, and they look like dead aliens. Um, I've got to confess. Hmm. No, not really, but apparently they're very nice. Yeah. But the views were good. The river looked great. I could really live here. The government provide the public with large bottles of rum on every street corner. There's the proof. It's true. Then shopping and sightseeing done, it was a drive back down the river and back home again. So we got this. We can try that out. Here so we can pull this out. I had four of them, there's only one left. Yes, I keep finding things missing on the boat, things that were on the boat before the storm uh, and when I left Vanuatu. So I know where those things have gone, over the side. But at least the boat, Squeaky and myself, are safe. Uh, so that means we lost a few soldiers in the war, but we won the war. That sun was getting a bit hot. Set up the buying new dinghies. I've actually lost count of the amount of dinghies I've had. There was Tiny Shaddy, Baby Shaddy, uh, and some other ones which I can't remember the name of. I think we've had, I think this, I think Squeak is the fifth. Somebody have to watch all the videos from front to back and tell me. Uh, I think so. And, and this is a this is a nice boat. This is at my front, my friend Uncle Bob's old boat, and uh, she's a she's a rib uh, and. Uh, I like this boat, uh, so uh, anyway, a new coat for squeaking. We should call the video that. And there you go, a new coat for squeaky. No, these are not tribbles. What they are are dead kittens. I kid you not, that's the real name. They're wind deflectors that you put on microphones. Got a new microphone, so I'm rigging it up. There she is, all sorted. Um, two dead cats or two dead kittens stuck together. Um, I'm not getting paid for this, by the way. Uh, it's a Rode microphone onto an Osmo action cam and this is good gear 
uh, I like it, but I don't get paid to, uh, I, they don't give it to me, I buy it. Uh, bad thing about Osmos is they have an adapter there for the microphone. So if you want to use a normal microphone on it, you have to buy an expensive adapter. Bad Osmo. Right. Okay, so there's the final rig. A little bit ungainly, but I think that's going to be okay. It's because it's on a, a sort of a dampened mounting. I might jiggle it around a bit. It's got a slightly high angle to it, but it, that, that does keep the fur away from the lens. So that's not a, not a bad thing. Um, yeah, I'm going to play with that, but that's basically it. So hopefully when the wind comes from the back, um, it's not going to be picked up on the microphone. I know the mic is at the front, but if it whistles around the back uh, of an unprotected microphone, you, you still can hear it. I know that from experience. If you're serious about doing filming, or even if it's just for fun, really you need a, an external microphone. If you're using um, a stills camera, one of these SLR digital uh, uh, normal stills camera that has video on it, buy a little little video microphone with a flurry thing on it. It does make a big difference. It's been windy every day, uh, every day now for a month. Touches of this. This is. You couldn't write this comedy, you know, it just happens, doesn't it? Big boobies. Then I wanted to go back to sea again, but before that was going to happen, a lot of things had to get done. This is my snubber. It's a rope that you put on the main chain from the anchor and it helps dampen the load on the anchor and keeps the load off the windlass. I used it as a harness for the tow when I was towed in. And of course it got all ripped up and damaged. Okay, two bowlins, and I'm using bowlins, um, the same size. Make sure they're taken up. Two bowlins, the same size. I'm trying to keep it so it's symmetrical. Symmetrical, symmetrical, cool, cool, cool. It's probably better not to look while I'm doing this. There might be some swear. And this knot does not come undone again, so don't do it unless you want to have a knot ever undone again. When it's had load on it, this knot will never come undone. Yeah, I think I got it. That's going to be good enough. There you go. All right, that, I'm happy with that. That'll do for now. Also, if one of those ropes breaks up there, I don't lose the hook. I'm sure with all these kind of things that I do, there'll be people saying, oh, no, no, Barry, you do it this way, you do it that way. And that may well be true, but this is just the way I do it. And uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> it, it, whatever works for you. At the end of the day, sometimes, that's what it's all about. Also, it's money. I don't want to get another piece of rope because this will break sooner or later. It will need to be replaced. They get some grief at the front of the boat there. So uh, uh, this will do for now. It's an old scraggy piece of rope that will help take the snatch out of the anchor chain. That's basically what it does. Anyway, for now, it's a job done. I can cross it off the list. Yeah. So I'm going out, going to a place called Fraser Island, and here comes my buddy to help me go. There he is, look. Uncle Bill, the man of the hour. <laughs> oh, that's not working again. Damn it. The marina had been home for me since I got into Australia. And uh, if you haven't seen it before, check it out. I got uh, in big trouble getting in here. And I've been here a month and I, I think I've just about recovered. Fairly low tide. I wouldn't be surprised if the keel's dragging through the mud and the depth sound is not working. And it's quite windy. So uh, I'm looking forward to this. And we've got nearly 40 miles to go and only nine hours to do it before it gets dark. What could possibly go wrong? There's rocks on the left. And there's a big sticky thing on the right. That's the port hand marker. 
with a bird sitting on the top. Good morning, Mr. Bird. Have you water there? This is uh, quite tight, as you can see. It's also very windy. Wind is coming straight on the nose now, so it's a good job I didn't put uh, sail up. And I can see those markers stretch into infinity. There's like five miles of this to go, and we're doing 3.2. I can break out from the markers a bit further on. Yet another marker. There's four birds sat on that one. <laughs> Just waiting for something to happen, look. Get off that solar panel. Ooh, yucca. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. This, I tell you what, this is not a nice place. It isn't. Oh, and I can't sail to where I want to go. The wind is telling me I can't do what I want to do today, not even close. I'm not enjoying this at all. I'm battling against this. I'm doing between 1.7 and 3 knots against the wind. The tide has probably stopped now or thereabouts and I can't get away from it because I'm in a channel. That's the thing. I have to keep going until I'm clear into deep water. I'm nearly there now. Morning. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please subscribe and press the notifications bell. Also, huge thanks to my wonderful patrons for always being there for me. Thank you so much. If you want real-time updates, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter X. Don't forget, never give up on a dream. And I'll see you next time. So, mate, it's my round. What would you like to drink? Beer! Oh, okay. Mm -hmm.